Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about Haru in the group here. At least that's the way I'm going to pronounce his name. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, he um, he reached out to me because what he has is a page where he wants to basically um, not do a survey because he's not using the survey element in ClickFunnels. He's just having a bunch of input fields essentially in here. But what he wanted to do is put this all into a pop-up. And then once you put in your name, email, and phone number here, you click this button. And then what it actually does would be to hide this row and then show the next row here. And you put in your next information, you click the button, it hides the first row and shows the second row. And you can normally do this inside of ClickFunnels as a built-in functionality on any of the buttons. So we come over here into our button, we set our action, and we come down to the bottom here and we say show hide. So then normally you would look at where what you want to show hide and you would click on it. But you see as I'm moving my mouse up and down here that the colored boxes in the background are turning blue. You can see them moving around back there. But there are no colored boxes. There are no way to go after the elements inside of the pop-up itself because they apparently these got left out somehow when they uh, put in the show hide stuff over here so it's not going to work so let's turn this back to get our website url and i'll show you what i had to do to overcome this because again i did not know that this was an issue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close out that pop-up and I'm going to save the page and then I'm going to preview it because what I had to do at this point was I had to think about, okay, what is it about this button that once we set it as doing show hide, how is it done programmatically that we can um, affect what we're doing? How How is it in the code that it does it? Now, sometimes you're never going to be able to find it in the code. It's going to be long, long away from us. It's going to be behind the scenes. It's going to be server side only. It's not going to be client side at all. You won't be able to see it. But in this case here, it is actually in the HTML code. And we can then, because it's in this HTML code, we can see on the page, we can then recreate this for ourselves by using a little bit of JavaScript. And so what I did is I came in here and this, this button I put on this page here and I set it as being a um, show hide. So let me just show that to you real quick here. So here's the button, we set the action. And then I said to uh, show one row and to hide a different row, whatever rows they are is irrelevant. Um, I just did it to see what it would then do to the code. And what it did versus a button that does not have this set up is it, in fact, um, let me see here, I think I can inspect this button here. And we should see, yeah, so here it has open the pop-up on this one. And then if we just scroll down here, here is the second one. And here we just have that hashtag that you saw me uh, leave in there. It's, it's there natively. Uh, but the big difference is right down here at the bottom, it says data show buttons, button IDs, and data hide button IDs. So here we got the show button IDs, and here is the row that we want to show the uh, CSS ID selector for the row we want to show. And then we have data hide button IDs. And then if we scroll over a little bit, we'll also have the CSS ID selector. Now these here are known as attributes in HTML. And then in the element above this, see this element down here that I've highlighted, this is the actual anchor text of the element. And then for all of the ClickFunnels buttons, they have multiple, they just have two layers. You have the outer button essentially, and then you have the anchor text on the inside with that actually creates the link. Uh, but on the, on the container of the button, we also have here data L button type equals two. Well, if you come up here, you can see this here for this first um, button where we're telling it to open the pop-up, this says data L button type equals one. So we have to have uh, the data L button type attribute equal to on the one that we're setting up. And we also have to add in these other two attributes, the data show button and the data hide button. And so, and, and notice here, before we go any further, notice here, when we put in the ID that the hashtag is not on there, it's very important you put on the hashtag 
and it will, of course, kill everything. So let's take a look at what we got to do here. What we have to do, let's first off open up this pop-up and we will, um, oops, clicked on the wrong thing there. Don't need to edit the settings. But a couple things we need to do is we need to come up with what is the CSS ID selector for each of these rows. Because as we click on this first button, we want it to hide this top row and show the second row. When we click on the second button here, we want it to hide the second row and show us the third row. And then the last button here, that is submits the page. So we just click on that submits the page. In our case here, when I do submit the page, there's only one there's only one page in this funnel, so it just reloads the page. But so we have to come up with what is the CSS ID selector for the um, for the row that we want to hide in this case. And so we just grab this off here. Again, we don't want that hashtag. And then in the actual code itself, that would be the equivalent of what we have right here. So that would get put in there because that's um, will actually be the one we want to hide. But you get the idea. It's You just have to make sure you put in the right ones for the show and the hide when we write out the code. And then the only other thing we have to look at is we either have to grab the CSS ID selector for each of the first two buttons, which that would be this here, including the hashtag in this, in this case, or we can give it a data title. And in this case here, I gave this a data title of button 11111. And then of course on the second one, that was 22222 and 33333, even though we don't really need a data title for that third button. So now all the magic happens in JavaScript or in this case here, more accurately, we are using jQuery um, to do this, jQuery library, jQuery framework, uh, whatever you want to call it. And you probably just saw me resizing the screen here. This is a little bit of a bookmarklet that I created so that I can uh, move these elements around and resize them and stuff like that. It just makes it a lot easier to work with it on the page. But so the so I showed you everything that we need to get to. So then how do we get there? Well, what we do is, again, we're going to come in here now. This here is our just one line of uh, jQuery code. And so we first off have to start off with our selector. So we're going to say here we want this to be the data title. Again, we made the data title for it, button 11111. And so we have that right there. So now let's look actually here. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, let's open the pop-up and click on the button that says open the pop-up. And here it is. So in this case here, let's inspect this button. And this button right here, again, our data title is button 11111. And we want it to put in this information. Now, this stuff down here at the bottom, these two last two lines, would not be here. And neither would this uh, data L button type. That won't be here either. That's actually what we're putting into here with this little bit of code. And so... We're going to come in here and we're going to say, okay, go to that button element and we want to give it the attribute. As I said, these are all known as attributes and the attribute is just a button or data L button type of two, which is exactly what you're seeing here on the screen. So we got data L button type of two and we got our data title of button 11111. So it's basic. All you're doing here is we're taking what we got right here and we're telling it in code format to put it in there, but it's very simple. You can actually just kind of read it right off the screen here. So then on the second two, or number two and number three, we're not just hitting the data title itself, we're hitting the element after that, the A, um, a tag or the, yeah, the a, a tag, the anchor um, element below this here. And so we have to put an A after after this here. So we do a little carrot and an A. Would it work without the carrot? You can test it that way. A lot of times I find if it's the very first element, it doesn't like to work without the carrot there. So try it either way. And then again, we're going to do the same thing here. The attribute, exactly what you saw on the screen right there. And then we put in right here, which one do we want to show? So this is the second row. We want to show the second row and we want to hide the first row. So then for the Second button, same thing here. We put in the L button type of two. We tell it which one we want to show and which one we want to hide. And all of this runs because it's in the script here. Now we could put, um, we could have put a document ready function around this thing. It's not really necessary because if it doesn't have that wrapper around it, it will run on document ready. And if you know anything about how the DOM 
uh, works inside of jQuery, then you, you know what I'm talking about, but it will load it at the earliest possible time in the page loading process. So it loads it right up, right away, and it gives each one of these now two buttons that we have, it gives them those attributes. So now the page is completely loaded. Well, now your consumer is on the page and they're gonna click whatever button they're going to click or they're gonna mouse out, and that's going to activate the pop-up. So in our case here, we activate the pop-up and then it would work. But now in this case here, let me just do one thing real quick, which is to come in and hide those two, oops, come on, get out of there. Uh, we wanna hide section or row two and row three. And so we will save this again and we will, I think I'll just click on preview here just in case. And so now we're, we're coming through our page and it says, oh, hey, if you want to blah, 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 sign up for a coaching call, you know, whatever it is, um, open up the pop-up. We open up the pop-up. You fill in, in this case here, he was looking for uh, first, uh, first name, first and last name, email, and phone number. And then we would click that button. And as you saw, the first row went away. The second row appeared. And in the case of what they're looking for here, then you put in your job because um, you put in these elements he has here, these um, input fields. You can put those in anywhere. I'm just demonstrating how the buttons work here. And so now we will click on that. It will go to number three. And like I said, now when we click on this, in the case of what Haru had here, we are going to have all of this content as somebody comes through here they're going to be filling these things out you put in your time these are just drop downs right inside of click funnels these here you would type into the blank but when we get down to the bottom and we finally hit the last one which is the submit button then it will submit uh, all the content it will save it to the click funnels database and all the all the contacts in click funnels are based upon an email address because everybody's email address has to be something unique there's no two identical email addresses anywhere in the world at least not that i know of um and so because of that it creates that database item inside the click funnels contact database and stores all the additional information along with it and like i said before in our case here because i only have one page here i don't have a second page for my funnel it will just um it will submit the page and then reload the page but in your case here you would have them click the uh submit button and then it'll go to a thank you page or go to whatever the next funnel step is that you want it to go to. So that's what I wanted to do here. This was, um, it was a tricky little thing because um, I did not know, and apparently, I don't know if ClickFunnels support even knew, that you cannot put a show hide into a, into a uh, pop-up because they don't populate, because the elements themselves do not populate into the list. So this was a quick, simple little way to get around it. And in case anybody thought uh, before I went into this that I knew exactly what I was doing and I just said, oh, hey, this is gonna be simple and just do it. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a clue. I'd never done this before. It took me probably about an hour to figure the whole thing out and write the code and get it done. And so, but that's just, that's what I do. And that's what I love doing is just figuring out little things like this and helping out other ClickFunnels users. So if you got any questions, just let me know.